Hey everybody, welcome back to All Fiction is Fantasy. Daniel here. I hope you're doing well, and if you're not, I hope you are soon. Okay, today on All Fiction is Fantasy, we are going to be doing a huge book haul. I recently went on vacation. I took a road trip from uh, northern Washington, just north of Seattle, all the way down through Oregon to the Central Valley of California and to visit some friends and family. And I really enjoy long road trips, especially when I am by myself where I can just do what I want, stop when I want and stop and kind of, you know, stop and smell the roses along the way, make the road trip part of the vacation. And so with uh, this trip, I decided to stop at a number of bookstores. It was kind of like a book shopping vacation in addition to visiting friends and family. And so I headed out from uh, north of Seattle down and the first stop was Tacoma Book Center in Tacoma, Washington. I had heard a lot about this bookstore and I just haven't made it there yet. It's only about 45 minutes from my house and it, it's billed as the largest used bookstore in Washington. I don't really know if that's true. I think there were half price books that were bigger, but they're closed now. So maybe it is. I, was, I think I was expecting it to be a little bigger, but it was still a really cool shop. Exactly the kind of uh, store I like to see. It was messy. There's uh, shelves overcrowded, books everywhere, stacks on the floor. It was a little uh, poorly lit. And so it was really hard to see the books on the bottom shelf. So the next time I go back, and I am going to go back because I want to spend more time there, I'm going to bring a little flashlight so I can explore a little more. But all kinds of nooks and crannies and little rooms off the side, off, off the side of the main room. Really cool store. Um, the next stop was at Time Tested Books in Sacramento, California. This was a wonderful store. Very well lit, very inviting. It reminded me of a kind of a higher end half price books, the same kind of caliber of collection with a little more focus on higher end collectibles, first editions. And at Time Tested Books, I asked the owner if he knew of any other book, like really great bookstores around that had old science fiction, old fantasy. And he told me about a bookstore called Cal's Books in Redding, California. Now, I visited Cal's Books on the return trip because I had already passed through Reading. But Cal's Books is like a treasure trove. It is a hidden gem. You would never even know it existed if you were driving by. It's in an old warehouse, completely off the beaten path. And I mean, this bookstore was absolutely overflowing with amazing books. I am going to be taking another trip to Cal's Books, even though it's a, it's a complete day's trip away. It, I would have to stay the night just to drive down to Redding, California. And it was amazing, but super cool guy that owned it. Very knowledgeable, really good prices on stuff. The the condition of a lot of the books uh, maybe leaves a little bit to be desired, but the prices are right. They are cheap. He's like blowing out everything. He had comic books, records, all kinds of books. Really, really cool bookstore. One of the coolest bookstores I've ever been to. Uh, then another bookstore in Reading called Linda's Book Nook, and it was more of a thrift store style bookstore. Not a lot of high quality items, but some really good. I found some really good books at great prices, and I was really glad that I stopped at Linda's. I, when I walked in, I wasn't expecting much, but the more I looked, the more I found. And she told me that they just recently bought uh, two or three huge estate sales worth of books and to check back in in a couple of months because there's going to be a lot more. So when I go back down to Cal's books, I'll make sure to hit up Linda's book nook again. And then once I arrived uh, at my destination, I took my yearly trip to the book barn in Clovis, California. The book barn is an absolute treasure of the Central Valley of California. I don't think a lot of people who live in Fresno and live in, in Clovis really know what they have with the book barn. I always find something great there. They have a fantastic collection of local authors. So like William Soroyan and that kind of stuff. They have a great Western section and they also have a lot of a valuable, high, highly valuable old uh, hardback books. 
and some good vintage paperbacks. I found some really nice stuff there. About 20 years or so, it's been a while, but about 20 years or so, they had a complete collection of Arkham House books. And over the years, that has slowly been selling. But their prices on their collectibles stuff is are, are usually too high for me. They they know what they have and they they charge a premium for what they have, unfortunately. So I'm never really able to to to, to buy a lot of the expensive stuffs at uh, expensive books at at the book barn. Uh, they did have I saw the only time I've ever seen in a store a first a first edition of uh, Stephen King's The Gunslinger, and that was really cool. I think it was like three thousand dollars or something. And then in Fresno, I went to the Book Nook, another Book Nook. This wasn't Linda's Book Nook. This was just the Book Nook. And they used to be at one location and they were only okay. But they recently moved to a little bigger location and their collection had greatly improved. They had all kinds of great science fiction and fantasy and uh, just really good uh, straight literature. So I'm really glad I went back to the Book Nook. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this little introduction and seeing all the pictures that I took. And now we're going to get straight to the book haul. Okay, so here are the books that I purchased on this uh, road trip. If there was a theme or the theme that emerged while I was shopping was Brian Lumley. I just happened to find a whole bunch of Brian Lumley books. So let's start with the Brian Lumley stuff. I did pick up this old Arkham House edition of Beneath the Moors from Brian Lumley. And this is, uh, like I said, this is an Arkham House edition from 1974. This is one of the only Arkham House books that I do own because they're just they're just so expensive nowadays. And you can usually buy them in newer, cheaper editions. But uh, I got this at Cal's in Reading and his price was right. So I was super happy to get this beautiful condition, uh, mint condition, really. And I'm looking forward to reading this novel. It's a Cthulhu-esque novel from Lumley that I have not read yet. Also at Cal's, I did pick up parts one and two of Brian Lumley's trilogy, his Dreamlands trilogy. And once I found out that it was a trilogy, but he didn't have part three, I ordered part three in the parking lot from eBay. But this is the Hero of Dreams and Ship of Dreams. And this is a fantasy trilogy that is set in Lovecraft's dream land, his uh, dream world. And uh, this is a really nice book. They're in great condition. The type is kind of weird. It's like Courier or something. I don't know. They're not the, they're not the, the, the best looking books on the inside, but they are illustrated. So there are, uh, let's see, there are about eight, illustra eight illustrations in each. And each one is illustrated by a different artist. This book here has illustrations by Gene uh, uh, Corbin and Hero of Dreams, Brian Lumley. This is from Buffalo, uh, Paul Gainley, publisher 1986. So really nice additions here. I like the covers a lot. And then here is part two, Ship of Dreams. And part two, Ship of Dreams was illustrated by Alan Kozowski. And part three is called The Mad Moon of Dreams. And this one has some really nice illustrations as well. That is awesome. That Cthulhu uh, there on that pirate ship. So yeah, looking forward to reading these. I've never read this trilogy from Lumley before. And I, I do like his Cthulhu mythos fiction quite a bit. I also picked up from Brian Lumley, uh, Psychomech. I am reading this now. This is the first part of a trilogy. This was from 1984, about two years before Necroscope. And this feels kind of like a dry run, kind of like a practice run for Necroscope. I'm not enjoying this a lot. It's okay. I should have it finished up in a couple days and I will do a review of it. I definitely don't like it as much as Necroscope. It's a little meandering. It's not very exciting for a horror novel. There is almost zero horror in it. It's just, it's merely okay. It has some good vibes and that's what is keeping me reading. Then I picked up another one of Lumley's Cthulhu novels and that is uh, Spawn of the Winds. The unholy universe was ruled by the Wind Walker. So this says that they're outcast mutants and outlaw adventurers waging a space-wide vendetta against the most supreme evil in existence. Their leader is a telepath with a terrifying weapon, the uncanny power to sense thought patterns and divine consciousness. They are destiny's crusaders trapped in a crossfire between cosmic horror and infinite hell with the fate of the universe in the balance. 
the spawn of the winds. Then I picked up two newer editions or better uh, editions in better condition of Necroscope uh, 4 and 5. My copies are falling apart and I saw these. They were a great price for really nice editions of these old uh, mass market. And this is the way I like to read these kinds of books and the old mass market editions. And so these are just going to be replacing ones that I already own. But I wanted to do a reread of Necroscope this year. I've actually only read parts one through three. So I'm looking forward to reading four and five. And then I did pick up this uh, Hagopian and other stories. So this is a collection of Cthulhu Mythos tales from Brian Lumley. I never had this back in the day. And I wanted to pick this up for one of the stories we will be reading for the Arkham horror uh, fiction series that I'm going to be doing will be from this book there. And then finally, also for Necroscope, I picked up uh, two of the books from the final trilogy. Uh, I need to order Blood Brothers still. I think I think Blood Brothers is the first one of this trilogy, but we have uh, The Last Airy and uh, Blood Wars there. Two massive horror volumes here. Uh, Nestor and Nathan Kiklu are the twin sons of Harry Coe, the Necroscope, united by blood. They also share some of their father's awesome powers. But what they do with those gifts cannot be more different. Nathan takes up the struggle against the metamorphic vampires while Nestor, fascinated by the vampire's eerie evil, has become his twin son's worst nightmare, a vampire lord. Uh, Harry Coe's sons have become the bitterest of enemies, each determined to destroy the other. When the next they meet, one will surely die. So yeah, looking forward to reading all of these books this year diving back into that series. It has been quite a while. Okay, the next stack here is a novelization stack. I was able to find a whole bunch of novelizations. Uh, first up here is the novelization of the first series of Battlestar Galactica, and this is by Glenn A. Larson and Robert Thurston. Kind of cross-media thing where they had novels, they had toys and games, and of course the original TV series. I love the newer Battlestar Galactica, it's probably my favorite science fiction television show of all time, but I have been wanting to read this original novelization. I think it should be a really fun read. Uh, the holy grail of my uh, book trip here, <laughs> Spaceballs the book. Uh, very cool. A novelization by Jovial Bob Stein based on the screenplay written by Mel Brooks, Thomas Meehan, and Ronnie Graham. Graham. I'm not sure how Mel Brooks's comedy reads in fiction. It will be very interesting to check this out. And speaking of Mel Brooks, uh, my friend Aaron, if you are watching, please skip ahead a couple minutes because I bought something for you that I'm going to show next. So uh, Blazing Saddles novelization. Uh, I have no idea how this is going to read. I bought this at the Book Barn. And it's pretty rare. I probably paid too much for it there, but I had never seen this before and I wanted to get it for my buddy Aaron for his birthday. And this is a novel by Tad Richards. Who's Black Bart? He's your everyday red-blooded black sheriff appointed by your everyday blue-blooded governor to run your everyday white citizens out of Rock Ridge so that your everyday yellow-bellied criminals can sell their town's land at a huge profit to the railroad. What's coming th uh, to the railroad that's coming through? Who's Black Bart? He's the hotshot hero of Blazing Saddles, the wildest spoof Mel Brooks has spawned to date. So uh, my buddy Aaron, this is like his favorite movie. So I think you'll appreciate having that in his collection. And then I did complete my Raiders of the Lost Ark collection. So I did recently buy Temple of Doom, which was written by James Caan. And I love James Caan's work in Poltergeist, uh, the, the, the Poltergeist novelizations. Some of my favorite books, really. And I remember reading Raiders of the Lost Ark as a kid, so I'm glad to have this again. So this was a novel by Campbell Black. And I'm looking forward to reading the whole Indiana Jones trilogy. And then here we have Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. So a lot of these old novelizations, they had pictures from the movie inside. And as the books aged, the picture pages often started falling out because they were just cheaply made. And the picture pages here are definitely falling out. The spine is completely broken there. So I... I imagine this probably has one more read in it, but I will get a read of the entire Indiana Jones trilogy and then do a, do a review on those. And then I also picked up the Chronicles of Riddick 
from Alan Dean Foster, king of the novelizations. I really enjoy Chronicles of Riddick. I think it is a very flawed gem as far as the movie goes. And I'm looking forward to seeing how the book expands on it because novelizations usually expand upon the movie because they are based on the written script, not the shot script. And so you end up getting a lot more character. You end up getting more kind of connecting scenes, more story. And so I, one of the things about the movie that disappointed me was it felt like stuff was missing. And so this might be a more complete experience. And I'm really looking forward to reading the Chronicles of Riddick. And then, uh, jo uh, of course, George Lucas's THX 1138 by Ben Bova. So Ben Bova was a very well-established science fiction writer, and he wrote the novelization for THX 1138 based on the screenplay by George Lucas and Walter Merck. Such a weird movie, very dark and kind of twisted, uh, interesting movie. I... Don't remember much of it, though. It's a movie that I don't watch very often because it is kind of boring. So I'm wondering how the book is going to hold up. And it looks like now we have just a few kind of uh, anthologies here. So I did pick up two Twilight Zone books. From, uh, they are Rod Serling. So these are fiction that was uh, written by Rod Serling. I've read some of his fiction before and it is a very good. So two books based on the Twilight Zone, or not based on the Twilight Zone, but, and I think Rod Serling was a pretty good writer. He, I think he's a writer who is often forgotten about as far as his fiction goes. He's more well known for the Twilight Zone TV series, but he was also a pretty good writer of science fiction and kind of weird horror, weird sci-fi stuff in his own right. So yeah, looking forward to reading those. I'm not sure if I've read any of these stories before because I do have one kind of bigger collection of Twilight Zone fiction, but I love these Tempo Books edi uh, editions. And they were in pretty good condition with uh, a pretty good price on each. And then I also picked up this Rod Serling's Devils and Demons. So he was an editor on this book and this book contains a whole bunch of different stories uh, written by people like Judith Merrill, H.G. Wells, uh, Ben Bova, Robert Louis Stevenson, Washington Irving, Rudy Kipling, Kate Wilhelm. So a lot of uh, different authors there. And this is a connoisseur's collection of unforgettable chillers by master storytellers of the past and present. Tales of supernatural horror, science fiction, fantasy, bizarre shockers chosen especially for the demon in you by Rod Serling the Grand Master of the Unexpected. All right, and then another short story collection here from Richard Matheson, of course. Uh, the Shores of Space, 13 spine-tingling stories of eerie happenings in a horrifying world. Really nice condition there. I like that cover a lot. And then I was really happy to find this because this is the, the last of the mass market versions of Spider Robinson's Callahan, uh, the Callahan stories that I was missing. Little tear on the cover there. Looks like it was cut by a box cutter, but no big deal. I love the Callahan stories. If you have never read the Callahan stories from Spider Robinson, I highly, highly recommend them. They are just so much fun. Callahan's is a bar that different species and people go to and all of the stories kind of transpire around the, the, the patrons of the bar. And uh, the bar is the setting and things happen in the bar and then people will tell stories. You have to get up and tell a story. And so it's a really nice kind of framing device for an anthology of great stories. Very kind of lighthearted, but a lot of humanity in Spider Robinson's stuff. A really good collection here. And um, yeah, I, I can't recommend these books enough. I don't think people read them enough anymore. I I'm not sure if they're completely out of print these days but they deserve a lot more attention. Okay, and then here we have a stack of kind of uh, some hardbacks and some trade paperbacks. So I did pick up another Arkham House here, something I never heard of before, and that is The Third Grave from David Case. And let's see, The Third Grave here. Who was that cover by? Jacket by Stephen E. Fabian. And uh, this was published in... 1981. So one of the later Arkham House books here. I think it's kind of a Egyptian themed horror kind of pulp adventure style novel. I had never heard of this uh, book or this author, but it was a really good price for an old Arkham horror uh, hardback. So I wanted to pick that up. 
This book I picked up for the Arkham Horror Fiction uh, project I'm working on, and this is the Book of Yig, Revelations of the Serpent, because I was having a really hard time finding fiction of Yig or uh, fiction based on Yig. So if you know of something that's a little off the beaten path that you really like, let me know. This book has four or five novellas, The Snake in the Garden, Andrew Doran and the Journey to the Serpent Temple, Still Life with Death, Revelations, and Coda the Return. And this is written by a whole bunch of authors who I have never heard of before. So I don't know if any of these are good. I am trying to find something about Yig, but I don't, uh, I just something off the beaten path a little bit. So if you have a recommendation for some Yig based fiction, uh, please let me know. And I was really excited to find this. I could have sworn that I, I owned this at one time. But when I went to do my, my video on the Narthotep, I couldn't find it. And I guess I just didn't own it. So I did find this. I believe I found this at the Tacoma Book Center. And this is stories about the God of a Thousand Forms, of course. We have talked about uh, Narthotep on the channel before. And really happy to have this now in my collection, one of the Chaosium books. This has a whole bunch of good stories in here. And um, yeah, just just it's, it's just nice to have these at, at your fingertips so you can open one up and read a nice little thematic uh, short story about one of the ancient ones or one of the outer gods if you want to. And this was a really cool find here. I had no idea that Alan Dean Foster actually wrote a Cthulhu Mythos tale. Maybe he's done more. I'm not sure. This was a discovery. And this is the horror on the beach. A Ken Kruger production. I just, this was sitting like this in the spine or on the shelf. I had no, no nothing on the spine and I just happened to pull it out. This was at the Tacoma Book Center. And I was like, wow, okay. I'm kind of, I kind of like Alan Dean Foster and I like Cthulhu stuff. And hey, that's a match made in heaven here. Uh, this I got actually at the book barn. And this is an old zine called Crypt of, Crypt of Cthulhu, which was put out by Robert M. Price. Uh, there we go. $27 or $25.95. I think I paid the $25.95 uh, price there. But uh, I've never owned any of the Crypt of Cthulhu. I think these are really cool old zines. I've never seen them in any bookstores. I know I've seen them on eBay before, but this contains some, uh, it's just, just an old style zine. It contains some fiction. Let's see who the fiction, it has a story from Frank Belknap Long, uh, Clark Ashton Smith, Robert E. Howard. And then it has a bunch of reviews and I thought the reviews were pretty interesting here. Um, let's see couple of them in particular were written by, let's see, where are those reviews at? So here is a review. So this review by Michael Shays, The Color Out of Time by Lynn Carter. So that's cool. Lynn Carter was writing for this zine. It also has a review by S.T. Joshi. And it also has, uh, let's see, there was one other thing I thought was cool here. It does have a review of Ted Klein's The Ceremonies. So yeah, this is cool. And then it has some letters too in the mail call. It actually has Mel Call of Cthulhu. It actually has a, a letter written by Brian Lumley and a letter written by Ramsey Campbell, a letter written by S.T. Joshi, uh, L. Sprague de Camp. And uh, yeah, so that's pretty cool. Neat little piece of history here. The Crypt of Cthulhu. The cover story was Gateway to Forever by Frank Belknap Long. And this is probably this... This here was probably the best buy I made. I got this at Time Tested in Sacramento. I thought it was going to be incredibly expensive. And this is, of course, Tales of Zothique from Clark Ashton Smith. So I'm not the biggest fan of Clark Ashton Smith. I know I'm supposed to be, but I don't love a lot of his stuff. Um, I like a few stories in each collection that I've read. I find his stuff to be really kind of laborious and too challenging for the payoff. But when he hits, he hits pretty hard. And I've actually never read any of the Zothique stories. And those are kind of his more straight fantasy stuff. And I got this for about a third of what it usually goes for. This is a first edition from Necronomicon Press. Just a really, really nice book. A great condition. It has a few illustrations throughout. And yeah, I was super happy to find this and I couldn't believe the price. I went out to my car after I bought it and looked it up on eBay and I was like, oh my gosh, wow, 
I can't believe I got this for the price that I did. So super excited to read through that. Uh, this I picked up, this was at the Book Nook in Fresno. And this is an occurrence in Crazy Bear Valley from Brian Keene. So Brian Keene is kind of a well-known horror author. And this is a an old West, a, a weird West that he wrote. I had no idea he wrote weird West. So I love the genre. I like the author and decided to pick it up. Okay, another book I picked up at the Book Nook in Fresno. And that is Larry McMurtry. And it is his biography on Crazy Horse. So this is a, a small series from a Penguin Press. It's all kind of uh, authors doing biographies on historic figures. And I love Larry McMurtry, of course, uh, Terms of Endearment, Lonesome Dove, The Last Picture Show, three of my all time favorite books. And I know that he uh, I know that McMurtry is a is a good writer of nonfiction. He writes good essays and I'm looking forward to reading about Crazy Horse. I think this should be a really interesting read, and it's short, kind of to-the-point biography from Penguin, from Penguin Lives. This I got at the Book Barn, so I'm pretty sure that I already own these stories in my huge collection of Sturgeon short fiction, but I loved this. I think this was a book club edition here. No, this was not a book club edition, but book club uh, size here. And uh, this is a collection of his Westerns. His, he did straight Westerns. So this was by Theodore Sturgeon and Don Ward. Seven Unusual Stories of the Old West by Theodore Sturgeon, popular science fiction writer and Don Ward, formerly an editor of Zane Gray's Western magazine. So I loved this cover and I just thought it would be awesome to have all of Sturgeon's Western fiction in a single collection. So really nice addition there. This I picked up at, I think this was at Linda's Book Nook in Reading, and this is a nice book club edition of Clive Barker's In the Flesh. I have always loved this cover. I have this in a mass market version. I love book club edition hardbacks. Those are my favorite kinds of hardbacks because they're usually smaller, and I like the, 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 the paper quality, and I, I love the size. So really happy to have this. And then this I picked up at the Book Barn in Clovis, and this is a collection from Robert Lynn Aspen, his uh, Sanctuary slash Thieves World setting. So this is just a huge collection of a whole bunch of different stories. So we have, I think this has three books in it. So it has Thieves World, uh, Tales from the Vulgar Unicorn, and Shadows of Sanctuary. So I used to read these kinds of stories back when I was in uh, elementary school, junior high, and high school. So I'm kind of looking forward to checking them out again. I don't remember any of them. So if I have read any of these before, I'm pretty sure they're going to feel like new, new works for me to, to enjoy. And then this book here, I picked up at the book barn in Clovis. I have no idea what it is, but I just thought it sounded interesting. It's from Conker Beasley Jr. And it's called Hidalgo's Beard, a California fantasy. A uh, funny, haunting, and originally imaginative, a, surreal, sur a surrealistic cross between Max Schulman and Carlos Fuentes. I enjoyed it very much and look forward to Mr. Beasley's further work. That was from Peter S. Beagle, author of The Last Unicorn. So this says that Hidalgo's Beard is a very different kind of picaresque novel, one that convincingly intermingles the real and the surreal to create a new kind of fiction hauntingly reflective of the age in which we live. What this reminds me of is uh, Richard Brodigan or uh, some of the early works from Rudy Rucker in his trans realism, which he incorporated a lot of his life in, on the coast, the central coast of California, uh, but he did so in a science fiction setting. This sounds like a similar thing where using the countryside of California, but in a fantasy setting. And I have, again, I have no idea what this is about, if it's any good or not. I've never heard of it, never heard of the author, but I, just, I decided to take a chance on it because that's what I really enjoy. But when I go to a bookstore, I like finding things that I'm not expecting to find. And that's hard to do online because when you're online and you're searching for books, you're usually searching for something specifically. But going to a bookstore and just browsing and finding these weird things uh, is a lot of fun. All right, so we have one more stack here. We'll do a kind of a double look here because one is a cover and one is a book. So 
I picked up uh, from Michael G. Coney, The Jaws That Bite, The Claws That Catch. And that cover is stunning. And of course, that is from Frank Kelly Freas. And uh, Frank Kelly uh, Freas or Freas? I, I think I usually say Freas. So Frank and Kelly Freas, one of my favorite cover artists in science fiction. I love his art so much. I think we've talked about him on the Dungeon Dive before. I don't really know anything about this book. But it says a symphony of sharks call them the spare parts people they chose the risk jail for convicted crimes or semi-freedom as someone's bonded servant for the same term the price was that they were body insurance if their master lost a leg or an internal organ they would have to supply the missing part that was the risk so that sounds kind of interesting but at the tacoma book center i also found this book Frank Kelly Frias as he sees it. Text by Frank Kelly Frias and Laura Brody and Frias. So husband and wife team. And this is a book all about his art from Paper Tiger Publications in the UK. Just an absolutely wonderful book. I love getting these kind of these kinds of art books for my favorite artists. And he talks a lot about his experiences drawing covers uh, he talks a lot about artistic theory and color theory different kinds of mediums he uses about using his wife often as a as a model and uh, lots of examples of his work in here so yeah just a fantastic book i was really really happy to discover this wonderful book and then a few others here so we have uh, the devil's guard from talbot mundy Talbot Mundy, an author of pulp fiction, of exotic fiction, uh, think a precursor to Indiana Jones, and this is The Devil's Guard, so looking forward to reading that. I also picked up this uh, cover here for The Demolished Man. I don't have this version of The Demolished Man. Uh, the Demolished Man, of course, from the great, the undisputed champion of science fiction, Alfred Bester, the best, uh, stars my destination. Can't you? It, it is impossible to beat The Stars My Destination. If you haven't read it yet, read it. It will change your life. Uh, but I love The Demolished Man as well. This first paragraph is fantastic. Explosion, concussion, the vault doors burst open, and deep inside, the money is racked, ready for pillage, rapine, loot. Who's that? Who's inside the vault? Oh God, the man with no face, looking, looming, silent, horrible. Run, run. Run or I'll miss the Paris pneumatic and that exquisite girl with her flower face and figure of passion. There's time if I run, but that isn't the guard before the gate. Oh Christ, the man with no face, looking, looming, silent. Don't scream, stop screaming, but I'm screaming. I'm singing on a stage of sparkling marble while the music soars and the lights burn. But there's no one out there in the amphitheater. A great shadow pit, empty except for one spectator, silent, staring, looming, the man with no face. Man, that is how, that is how you start a book. Fantastic. I picked up this uh, novel from Manly Wade Wellman, which I'd never heard of. I love Manly Wade Wellman. We've talked about him before on the Dungeon Dive and maybe here. But his, of course, his Silver John stories fantastic kind of regional pastoral science fiction but this is a or horror i should say weird fiction but this is a a time travel novel i'm usually not into time travel but i like manly wade wellman a lot and i had never heard of this so i decided to pick that up uh picked up a jack vance novel called the gray prince i know nothing about this novel but this says it's a fantasy epic I found this nice condition copy of Stephen King's Thinner. I collect Stephen King. I collect the uh, Signet Mass Markets. That's how I like to collect uh, Stephen King. And uh, But um, this was still what he was writing as Richard Bachman. So I, I believe there was an earlier version that was just from Richard Bachman. It didn't have Stephen King's name on it, I think. But I like this cover. I like the red hand and it's in really good condition. And I got it for only a couple bucks. And uh, it was uh, one of the mass markets that I, I was missing. So really nice to find that. Uh, the Death World Trilogy from Harry Harrison. I have parts one and two, but I've never been able to find part three in the editions that I have. So I decided to pick this up with all three parts joined together. Really fun kind of Death World. It's a death planet 
where these uh, you know astronauts land on a planet and everything on the planet is trying to kill them. So very cool. And then I picked up a couple replacements. So I have these two books here from William Ten, The Seven Sexes and The Square Root, Root of Man. And my other copies are really bad. They're falling apart. And William Ten is an excellent author, very, very underappreciated author. Hardly anybody reads him anymore. But he focuses on kind of satirical uh, science fiction injected with comedy and social commentary. He is a very good writer up there with Theodore Sturgeon. I would put him right next to Theodore Sturgeon. And his uh, he really excelled at, at uh, short fiction. And I believe there were six books that he collected or six collections of his short fiction. And I've read two of them and love them. And so I'm really happy to have these new uh, editions because they are a little nicer than the ones I already have. Uh, and a couple other replacements were for the Red Sonia books five and six. My copies that I previously owned of five and six were in really bad condition with huge creases on the covers. And these are in a much better condition. So happy I found these. These were at the Book Nook in Fresno and they were super cheap. I couldn't believe how cheap I got. I got them for like half, more than half off of what I paid for my really beat up copies. And then two Conan uh, books here that I got at Cal's. Uh, one is the Carl Edward uh, Wagner collection here. And that is the road or not collection, but it's a novel, a Conan novel that he wrote called The Road of Kings. I have another version of this, but I thought I picked this up because it was only six bucks and it's another cover, another cool cover here for Conan Road of Kings. And then I picked up The Treasure of uh, Tranicos, a Conan uh, novel written by Robert E. Howard. And the really cool thing about this is it has a ton, or this was actually revised, revised by Elspreg de Camp, um, and written originally written by uh, Robert E. Howard. So I'm sure there are some fans who take some issue with it being revised by Elspreg de Camp. But hey, what do you do? Uh, but this was uh, illustrated by uh, Maroto, and this has all kinds of illustrations in it. And that was one of the main reasons why I wanted this particular version here just because of like every, almost every page has illustrations and they're really, really cool. And the book was in pretty good condition. I was really happy to find this. I think that's pretty cool. So, all right guys, well, that is my absolutely massive book haul. I think I got some really cool stuff. I'm really excited for a lot of the discoveries that I made and just finding those cool bookstores and having making a cool trip out of it. So, all right, well, I hope you enjoyed this video. We will talk to you later, bye-bye.